Okay, moving on to the last and final team that I wanted to talk about in the Big East, and that is the team that I have finishing in last place in the league, and that would be Patrick Ewan and his Georgetown Hoyas. And I think when you look at this Georgetown team, right, last year at this time, and I know with the pandemic and everything that's been going on, that obviously seems like such a long time ago. But believe it or not, last year going into the season, I was buying a lot of stock in Patrick Ewing and Georgetown. I thought Patrick Ewing is a good coach who's been his first couple of years at Georgetown. He was really competitive. They didn't win that many games, but I feel like Georgetown, they did find their way onto the bubble in one of those two years and they were always competitive and I saw a Georgetown team with Mac McClung with James Akinjo with Josh LeBlanc with guys like Jamarco Pickett J- Javon Blair you know guys that I think could be pretty good and the weirdest part was last year Georgetown got better after Akinjo and LeBlanc left the team an exodus that really should have push Georgetown back considering they only had like seven or eight guys. But one thing I will say is this, the seven or eight guys they had that were playing were pretty good. I remember they had a non-conference huge road win against Oklahoma State in their season, then kind of just took off from there. And Georgetown did have enough Quadrant 1 wins by mid-February to be seriously considered for an at-large bid into the NCAA tournament. However, injuries and the lack of depth ultimately really caught up with them and they dropped their final six Big East games. They finished five and 13. And if the NCAA tournament would have happened, Georgetown probably would not uh, have made it unless they would have won the Big East tournament. But there has been a lot of negative energy around this Georgetown program right now, considering Akinjo, LeBlanc, and now Mac McClung, they've all left. And I think we could all agree, if you watch college basketball, all of those guys are are very talented players. But I do think things have gotten a little better. Now, does that not mean Patrick Ewing could have bought in a little more talent that was going to be immediately eligible after this season? Yeah, to be honest, I think right now for Georgetown, that's the biggest key. When I look at the rotation on this team, I just don't really know how many reliable contributors they have right now besides their starting five. And by the way, I said Georgetown lost their final six uh, Big East games last year. That was part of a seven-game losing streak to end the season, 15-10, and 10, which was not good. And now this season, Patrick Ewing is entering his fourth season as the head coach of Georgetown. And I understand he's Patrick Ewing and he's a legend at the University of Georgetown. One has to think, right, that his job isn't a thousand percent safe. He has brought in some big name recruits, but has failed to make the NCAA tournament and Georgetown hasn't made it since 2015. And this past offseason, Mac McClung decides to transfer to Texas Tech. Omer Yurt 7 was phenomenal last year. He graduates. And I do think when you look at the 2020-21 Hoyas, there are some questions. And it is hard to believe that they're making the NCAA tournament this year and ending that But there is one guy on this Georgetown team that I think is really underrated, and that is Kudis Wahab, and I think there's a lot to like about this guy. When you look at Wahab, uh, I think he's going to be a guy that averages a double-double, is really going to be that big body in the middle for this Hoyas team. They also bring back Javon Blair and Jamarco Pickett, who are two seniors who, for most of their career, have been role players, but I do think there's a chance that both of them could succeed with seeing a little bit of a bigger role for this season. You look at Javon Blair, it's interesting because at this time last year, I think if you were to ask most Hoyas fans, they would say their stock on Javon Blair would be down considering he was okay for the first half of his freshman season, but really, if you look at the numbers, hasn't done much since then, but he really did come into his own last year and played 40 minutes in seven of the Hoyas' final 11 games. He's a guy that could shoot, he could handle, and he could create his own offense. And the thing about Javon Blair is this. This was a guy that was kind of in Patrick Ewing's doghouse. As I said, there weren't really that many Georgetown fans that were buying significant stock in him. But at the same time, when I look at Javon Blair and his game, I think that losing McClung and Akinjo and LeBlanc is what ultimately really helped him succeed and get an opportunity last year. And now, with that being said, going into this year, there's at least some positive momentum for Javon Blair and the Georgetown Hoyas. Now, he isn't capable of really being a high usage number one option on an NCAA tournament team, but I do think he is a huge piece 
to this Georgetown team if they want to get uh, into the NCAA tournament, into the NIT, whatever postseason aspirations Patrick Ewing and this Georgetown Hoyas team have, Javon Blair is going to be a very important part in exceeding those because this is a guy that knocked down 37.6% of his three points three-pointers attempted last season and I think he's a proven defender he's able to block shots and rack up steals with his length and he is back he had a season last year and I really think that this year he's going to be able to produce now his running mate in the backcourt is actually Jalen Harris and I actually know a lot about Jalen Harris because I watched him play at Arkansas last season and things didn't work out very well for Jalen at Arkansas and I got to be honest I don't think he's a very good starting point guard in the Big East. I think if he's your starting point guard, your ceiling as a team is kind of limited. And the problem is they bring in two grad transfers, right? One with Jalen Harris and the other with uh, Chaudy Bile and Don Carey from uh, Siena. So three grad transfers in total. Um, I don't really think there's that much here that gets you excited if you're watching this Georgetown team play. Don is a guy who played at Siena, averaged 11 three and two there last year. He's fine. I just don't know in the Big East what he's going to be able to do moving up a level. Same with uh, Bile, the kid from Northwestern State. I do think a core of Blair, Pickett, and Wahab isn't awful, but really besides those three guys, there really isn't that much to like, including Jalen Harris. I'm sorry. I'm just not a huge fan of your team if he is your starting point guard. Now, one other kid I want to talk about that I'm kind of excited to watch for this Georgetown team is freshman Jamari Sibley. He's a 6'8 freshman, and out of all of the kids in this recruiting class for Georgetown, I think he has the highest upside. And when you look at this recruiting class, I do think it's very important for Patrick Ewing and the future of his coaching tenure at Georgetown for this freshman class to be very good because besides Akinjo and McClung, who were good but then left, we know how it ends, Patrick Ewing, I don't think, has really been able to develop his own talent so far since he's been the head coach of Georgetown. So Jamari Sibley, he's athletic. He could play either forward spot. He projects as a, uh, a slasher, paint scorer, and a dangerous transition threat. And he's really good, especially on the defensive side of the ball, where I expect him to be a real factor with his length. And if his development and jump shot gets more consistent, he could be one of the Hoyas' better players in a now, unfortunately for Georgetown, I do think that once Mac McClung announced that he was leaving, this year was kind of lost, and the back of your roster has five three-star guys, and for Georgetown in this Big East, I just think that's dead weight and throwing darts. Why not get a sit-out transfer from a high major or low major school that you could develop and improve, you know? They're about to lose four th uh, contributors from this year's team in Harris, Blair, Pickett, and b -way. So they're going to lose a lot. And I just don't understand why they couldn't get some more talent, maybe a little older and on the transfer market. Because when I look at Georgetown, I just see poor roster construction by Patrick Ewing. You need guys when you lose four seniors. And once again, I don't think Patrick Ewing is a bad coach. It's just poor roster management. And it's not like all of this is his fault because there were some things that he just couldn't control like Akinjo McClung and LeBlanc and all of those guys leaving. I do think if they would have stayed together, last year's Georgetown team actually could have been pretty good. However, at some point, he better hope that there are some pieces in this five-man freshman class full of the two to three star recruits besides Shibley because besides him, I don't really know if there's that much to love right off the bat when it comes to this recruiting class. Last year, he recruited three centers in one class with Kudis Wahab, Malcolm Wilson, and Timothy Igofi. I really didn't like that. Why are you using, Why are you wasting three roster spots on a center? And Patrick Ewing did a good job with Mac McClung and James Akinjo. It didn't work out. I get it. But besides those two, who else has he landed that's been successful? No one really, and that is a big, big concern, I think, if you are a fan of this Georgetown Hoya team and the way this roster has been managed. Georgetown seems destined to finish near the bottom of the Big East once again for the second year in a row, and obviously, it's super frustrating if you're Patrick Ewing because Mac McClung's transfer was really the last straw for a team that really severely lacks scoring 
On the other fe- uh, end of the floor, the Hoyas were the conference's worst defensive team last season, and they gave up way too many far open looks from the outside. While defense should be a little bit better in 2020, 2021, I think it's kind of hard to see them improving so significantly over last year to warrant consideration for being ranked any higher than 10th in the Big East heading into the season. And personally for me, I'm going to predict they finish in 11th because I see DePaul and St. John's both as more talented teams. I think Georgetown is a smidge more talented than Butler, but I'll buy the Butler way and everything Lavelle Jordan has done over the last couple of years over Patrick Ewing. So yeah, I'm going to predict Georgetown finishing last in the Big East. And if if this prediction is true, I'm telling you, man, I'm not going to say Patrick Ewing is going to get fired, but there may be Georgetown fans who may start changing their opinion on him. Suit.